Candale here, the Anxiety Relief Guy, and I'm continuing with my Level Up series. You know, I want to introduce you to my team that has helped me really level up, really make breakthroughs and, and overcome uh, just a lot of the crap that I was going through in my life. And uh, about four months ago, I reached out and asked people if they knew a personal trainer because uh, I had made the commitment to myself and other people to to really like boost up because I, I'm on stage all the time. So I want to make sure that I feel good and I look good and I want to make sure I'm in the top tip top physical condition for when I travel. So one of the hypnotists who actually works for me that I hired, she's like, dude, my brother is a personal trainer and he's in California and he does like this virtual program for people and and uh, like he'll, he will be like all over you. He like FaceTimes you and everything. He sends you workouts all the time, like gets your, your uh, meal plan straight. I'm like, all right. So I reached out to him. We had a call and it went really well. <laughs> and then I started looking him up and I realized he was freaking famous. Like he was in movies, he was on TV. I'm like, figures. <laughs> so with that, I wanna introduce you to my personal trainer who is on my level up team. Chris DeVecchio. Welcome, my friend. Dan, thanks for having me, man. It's an honor to uh, be part of your Level Up group, and it's been, uh, it's been exciting to watch your personal journey over the last few months. Well, this shirt that I'm wearing now, I got it like about a year ago off of Wish.com for 85 cents. <laughs> and it, I like didn't it came realize... from Is that a European style fit? Yeah, I didn't realize it was like a muscle shirt, so I couldn't fit into it. And I put it on for the first time last week. I'm like, holy crap, I can actually fit into this shirt now. So thank you. <laughs> Shoulders are looking pretty good. It shows off the muscles. Guns. There you right? go. <laughs> so uh, Chris, you know, I put out on social media that I was going to be interviewing my, uh, my personal trainer. And especially like now where I, I was going to the gym six days a week. And then I would take a day off for like rest and recovery. I really loved going to the gym and I can't, I can't believe I loved going to the gym. I never thought I would be the type of person who really liked to build that groove and really liked to go and be a gym rat. And the first couple of times, uh, I would say for the first like two or three weeks when the exercises you were giving me were new, it almost felt like I was a new kid going to a new school for the first couple of weeks. Um, so what I want to do today, I just want to kind of talk about the story of, of how we've evolved, um, how you can help other people because now we, now we can't go to the gym anymore. In fact, I FaceTimed you the other day and you were in the middle of your workout lifting up these like giant jugs of water. And I'm like, holy crap. I'm like, dude, this guy's like serious. So uh, first and foremost, what are some of the trends that you see changing because people can't go to the gym anymore? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really interesting time right now. Um, everybody is falling on hard times differently. Um, everybody kind of uh, responds and, and absorbs these changes and adjustments differently um, as it pertains to health and fitness. Um, obviously, the gyms are closed now, and so some people are fortunate enough to have home gyms and have a wide variety of home equipment other people, they don't have anything or they have minimal uh, equipment. And so they're forced to really have to get creative and think about how can I still maintain some level of physical fitness and accomplish the same goals or at least maintain what I've built up to this point and be able to kind of ride this out because truth is we don't know where the bottom of this is. You know, we don't know how long this is going to go on. Um, and I think that's probably the hardest thing for people to, uh, to get past right now. And so to, to your point, you know, as a personal trainer, and this is what I do for a living, you would think that I would have already been prepared for something like this and had a, a garage full of every piece of equipment you can imagine. But I've had the fortune of being able to run my business out of a great facility that has all the equipment. So I didn't need to invest in that. And I got caught behind the eight ball where I don't have a lot of equipment at my hand, at my disposal. I'm trying to get a piece of equipment online right now. Good luck. I mean, I can't even get dumbbells, let alone a rack or, you know, kettlebells or a ball, even bands are tough to find. Um, so, so, you know, the, the best way that I've found is that you just really have to get creative in terms of thinking about how you can move your body differently, how you can uh, take things in your own home to, to create versatility with your workouts. 
part of it is also framing it properly in your mindset that in this phase that we're in right now, the expectations for people to be having massive breakthrough workouts. And if your goal was to put on, you know, 10, 15 pounds of muscle, it's going to be a little bit more challenging. So aside from having to make actual adjustments to how we've been training our body, we also have to kind of adjust our expectations. And by doing that, you keep those congruent, right? So they're not, you don't have the expectation, I'm going to gain muscle all the way out here, but yet you're stuck here with very limited equipment to help you accomplish that goal. That gap creates a lot of anxiety, a lot of frustration, a lot of anger, you know, depression, whatever you fill the gap with whatever you want, right? So right. adjusting your expectations, maybe reassessing some of your goals, getting into a place uh, where you, you can become more realistic with what you expect of yourself and of your, of your goals right now. And combining that with either what you have in your home um, or, or picking up some minimal equipment. I've certainly gone the distance with my clients and, and being able to help prov provide resources. Um, as you've seen personally, you know, I gave you a workout yesterday just with a towel and <laughs> arguably one of the harder workouts that you've had to do. You know? It was. Uh, nice. Do you, you sent me, so you sent me a couple of workouts with just doing a rolled up towel. And I sent you a message afterwards. You're like, how'd it go? I said, who knew a towel could be so exhausting? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so, but it's all about understanding body, body mechanics and getting creative. And, you know, it's, and then also, like you said, I was at home lifting water jugs. You know, I've got these, you know, 50 pound water jugs that we used to be using in our home every single day. And, you know, I've got eight of them sitting in my garage so I can grab two of those and hold them down by my side and do squats or I can hold one over my head and do overhead press, you know? there's a lot of uh, advantage to being able to change your movement patterns that are unconventional compared to what you've been doing. So there's, it, it kind of gets exciting. And I think one of the questions that you had pop up, somebody had written in and, and asked you uh, was how can you get motivated to, to train at home during this time when, you know, you're lacking some motivation or you're not in the gym. It's like one of the ways, how can you do that? How can you accomplish that? And so, yeah. And that was, um, uh, let's see here, one was from uh, Connie uh, Waldkowski, who is, uh, who's actually a, a, a colleague and a student of mine. And uh, there is somebody else on Instagram, uh, future MD to be, uh, who both asked the same question, how, you know, how do you, stay, yeah. how do you stay motivated? Yeah, I just wanted to yeah, so, people. So, you know, human beings, we love to learn. Right. We love new things. Like, just like you said, you know, in the beginning of this program, you were going to the gym. It was one, two, three weeks of just this massive learning curve, but it became interesting and exciting for you. And so right now people are having to learn how to condition and train their body differently than just going in the gym and grabbing a dumbbell or grabbing a barbell. Right. So getting yourself into that mind space of, Hey, listen, I get, I get an opportunity to actually learn new ways to train my body and accomplish the same goal. And to give a specific example, using that towel workout that I gave you the other day, when we go into the gym and we want to train your back and you want to do a lat pull down for your back, you grab the bar above, you pull down and you squeeze, right? So instead, I showed you another exercise that you could do with the towel, laying down on your stomach, holding the towel out in front of you with your yep. chest arched up and squeezing and pulling back. Now, and it's you're, not, I, you're like squeezing the towel. You're, you're like creating tension, yes. pulling yep. tension yep. apart on both ends while you pull in and squeeze your back, but you're laying on your stomach in a prone position. So that in itself, had you never under, had we never been in this situation or circumstance, I probably would have never given you that exercise to ever do in your life. And you would have never had the opportunity to learn and train your body that way. And like I said before, it's great. What's great for the body when you're exercising is to always create change and change adaptation of how you're training your muscles so that you don't plateau. So this opportunity right now is giving people a chance to change their training, change their thinking, apply different movements, different patterns, so that their bodies, I think most people, what they're gonna find is that if they've been training in the gym and now they're training at home and they're being consistent with training at home and they're, and they're committing to it, they're gonna see their bodies break through, in a, break through a plateau in different ways that they never expect. They're gonna be sore, more sore than they've been in a while because they're doing different movements. They might be increasing their repetitions. They're doing reps a little bit faster or a little bit slower. They're finding ways to challenge their body differently that, that isn't as easy as just going into the gym and jumping on a machine. So 
that is, in my opinion, has been the best way to try to motivate people to get them excited about the change that's in front of them versus bitching and complaining or focusing on the fact that I can't go to the gym and work out because it's so much easier. Right. Of course, it's easier, but you know, this is what we're dealing with right now that's out of our control. So getting excited and shifting, uh, shifting your mentality about the excitement of this opportunity is, is, is kind of where I'm taking it. You know, it's also about being creative and looking at things differently because I texted you last night uh, or the day before, whenever it was, and you said, do you have anything that like weighs that, uh, that that's kind of heavy? And I'm like, no, not really. And then I was, I was getting ready for bed and I realized I have a 25 pound weighted blanket and you were like, uh, can, you know, that you're like, that's, that's what you got to do. Put that weighted blanket in a backpack or a duffel bag or something like that and, and use that. And yep. 25 pounds was about the weight that I was using at the gym for some of the workouts that I was doing at the gym. And yeah. so, so from there, and I know I might be blipping a little bit. Am I blipping on your side? Yeah, a little bit. It's okay. I'm okay. still catching you. All right, you're so okay, good. Um, and uh, so it's about being creative, but with mindset, how do you see that mindset fits into uh, getting physically fit, staying in shape, being creative? How, how do you see people's mindsets who are really successful at, at the program that you put them through? I think uh, probably the biggest thing in terms of helping people's mindset get in the right space and breaking through is just being very clear on what their goals are, right? When people aren't really clear on what they're doing, if you're just going to the gym mindlessly with no goals, no real stakes, you know, not, not really, not really invested in any particular way. There's no, there's no real hook, right? I I saw this quote um, the other day that said, If you're interested, you'll do what's convenient. If you're passionate, you'll do whatever it takes, right? And so whether we're under this circumstance that we're currently facing or whether it's three weeks ago when the world seemed normal, right? That same, I think that same principle applies. If you're interested, you'll do what's convenient. If you're passionate, you'll do whatever it takes. And passionate doesn't have to be, I'm passionate about getting to 10% body fat. Passionate could be, I'm really passionate about taking care of my health. I'm passionate about wanting to be around as long as I possibly can and thrive in this body that I have and wake up and have energy all day and, you know, be able to have the strength to, to do all the things I want to do, you know, and feel confident and comfortable, and, you know, loaded with self-esteem and self-worth and integrity and all these things. When you're passionate about that, you know, it's, it has a whole different approach. I mean, I'll speak for myself and I'm in a bit of a different category because I've been doing this for a long time. So my mind and my body are conditioned to stay on routine no matter what gets thrown at me. But I mean, I literally haven't strayed off of what is my meal plan since this whole thing has happened. You know, I've had, I could very easily be diving into ice cream and junk food and things that are kind of comfort foods and, you know, a little bit of emotional eating. I've had my own little journey over the last few weeks of dealing with what's going on, you know, but I always come back to, I'm, I'm human, so I have those moments like, oh man, but I come back to, yeah, but that's not going to make me feel good, you know? And right now, like, I need to feel as good as I possibly can more than ever, mentally, emotionally, and physically. So waking up every morning and still feeling good in my body, still feeling strong, still having plenty of energy instead of feeling sludgy and like any type of guilt that I might have had from eating or things that I didn't really, I know that weren't good for me or don't make me feel good. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't need that layered on top of all the other emotions that I'm, you know, going through right now, just like everybody else in the world. And you mentioned uh, food and eating plan, which I want to get back to in a moment. But a big part of this that really helped me be successful is knowing my why. And my why wasn't necessarily, I want to get into shape. So I look like a model that that wasn't it. And you sure? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I see you throw a blue steel every now and then up on the screen. <laughs> my, my why though, it came from a, a tragedy that happened over, uh, over the summer in June of 2019. And it went on for three months, uh, three or four months. And, 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 uh, that was 
when uh, I, I get a call from my doctor uh, from a routine physical because before I go on tour in the summertime, because I have like a two month period where I'm just doing nonstop show after show after show after presentation after corporate pr presentation, it, it's just there's so much in the matter of like three months and I'm always on the road. And um, so I always like to make sure I, I get a physical before then, make sure like things are on the up and up. Well, in the beginning of my tour, my doctor called me and I was in Virginia. <laughs> And he said, uh, you need to come back. We need to discuss some things about your blood work. And they thought I had uh, leukemia. And it was, it was one of the things that they, they thought it could be. Um, and I made the commitment to myself that if the test came back negative, which ended up being like a three month journey, finding that they were, that I didn't have leukemia um, or a condition called hemochromatosis, I didn't have any of that. So I made the commitment to myself, if I survive this, I'm going to focus on me and my, because my body was telling me something. And you know what, Chris, I went back to the hematologist and back to the oncology clinic. Um, and I remember texting you about this. I went back um, about two months ago to get an updated blood test. And they said, what have you been doing? They said, you've lost weight you're well hydrated and your levels actually have gone down to where they should be. You don't need to come back for any more testing. They said, keep doing what you're doing. And you know, that was my why is making sure that I, uh, and, and reminding myself of that as well. And sometimes purpose and sometimes our intention shifts a little bit, but I always get back to my why of, I want to stay here. I want to be healthy. Uh, I want to continue to focus on on things that that I'm doing because when I'm feeling good, I'm able to perform better for other people. I'm able to be there more for my clients. I'm able to show up more for the opportunities and, and present myself in the way I need to present myself. Um, and and part of that is knowing your why, which I think is really linked to mindset and having that drive you to motivate you. Uh, yeah. I agree 100%. I mean, I, you and I actually have a shared common uh, scenario there. And, uh, you know, briefly, I had one back when I was 16 that was very similar to yours, but my white blood cell count was off the charts. They thought possibly, you know, leukemia. That was kind of my intro into taking my health seriously. And, you know, we live in a time now where we don't have healthcare, really. We have what's called disease management. And, you know, now more than ever, we have the ability to take our health into our own hands right. instead of going to doctors and just getting thrown pills and medications, which create a whole other waterfall of symptoms, right? So, um, you know, being able to, to take our health into our own hands is, is no doubt probably the highest possible stake you could create for yourself. And if no one has ever experienced something like what you have and went through and what I went through when I was a kid. I actually went through another situ similar situation uh, two years ago that I had some stomach pain and they misdiagnosed it as cancer and stage four can and they stage four cancer, not, Hey, you think you might have cancer. It was, this is what the reading is. And so fortunately came back, they were completely wrong. They, they, they misread it. Um, on the scan, but it's those types of scenarios that if somebody's not already being proactive about their health and wellness, those types of situations will certainly get you there immediately. And so because I have that experience, and I'm sure because you have that experience as well, and now that you're in this space where you've really taken your health to another level on your own, free will, that I try to encourage people to create some sort of false scenario of what could possibly come down the road to use that as a way to, to, to drive a higher purpose of why you're going to the gym and why you're taking uh, into consideration what you're putting in your body, because right. there's nothing more valuable than our health. And you don't realize that until you're faced with what you went through, or you're sitting in the doctor's office and there's that 10 seconds of silence while they're trying to figure out a way to break that news to you. And the whole time you're sitting there going, I could have done something about this. You know, and I don't ever want anybody to have to go through that or feel that it's, it's devastating. It's, 
that's heart stopping. I mean, it really, you, you, your whole life reflects through your mind within seconds of being faced with that type of information. And so it's really, really, in some ways, really, really powerful, but I always like to tell people, learn from, learn from my mistakes, learn from things that I've gone through or learn through my path. You don't want to have to go through, I don't want to have to see you go through that yourself unless you have to. Right. Unless there's a real good reason for you to have to go through a learning lesson, you know? Um, but yes, to your point, that's kind of like a, 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 a much longer way of getting to and reaffirming, yes, having a really strong why will, will get you there, you know? And, and also the other part that's really helpful for me is support. Um, <clears throat> I had a lot of people say to me, dude, this guy is going to send you stuff through your phone. Um, uh, and and he, he, you're not even going to see him in person. And I'm like, that, that doesn't matter to me. And, you know, it is, I think it's, for me personally, it's more effective. Um, and, and cause I send you like this morning, I sent you videos of me doing my workouts and, and you text me back saying, dude, your breathing's off. <laughs> You're breathing opposite. <laughs> like you didn't know. I didn't realize it was opposite day. So, you know, <laughs> I was wrong. I was wrong. <laughs> no, I was flipping back, you know? And, uh, but, but what really works is having your support and knowing that, you know, I'm not going through this alone. And for the people listening and, and watching, uh, Chris will FaceTime me all the time. He texts me several times a day. And I'm like, dude, I don't know how you have like 20 clients and you're keeping up <laughs> with everybody. Uh, and, and yet you always do it. And it feels, it, it, it feels like you're really relatable and that you know exactly what we're going through, which, which is very helpful. So it appre I, I appreciate that support system because it's important when you're achieving any goal that you do have a supportive system or you have a coach or guide, someone that can navigate you through the changes, which is, that's exactly what you do, Chris. And so I appreciate that. Yeah, my pleasure, man. I mean, I think I, what I've discovered over the years of, of training and coaching clients is that that's really the missing formula, right? To be able to, to go to the gym and work out, you know, most people have some sort of idea of how to eat healthy, but what people are missing is how to master the art of adjustment and they're missing management skills. They're, 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 miss, they're lacking time management, stress management, sleep management. And the, and the one that I think is most important is energy management. Yeah. Where are they placing their energy? What are they focusing their energy on? Who are they keeping in their circle? That's allowing certain energies to penetrate their, their world and their minds and what they're doing, what they're trying to accomplish. And so for me, the recipe for my business, as long as I've been doing this has always been to be able to help create the support system that teaches my clients how to master the art of adjustment you set up a plan. When things don't go to plan, what do you do? Right. And so the only way that I can help provide that value is to inject myself on a daily basis and make myself available 24-7. I want to know what's going on in your head. I want to know when you're feeling good, when you're feeling bad, when you're feeling like you crushed it, when you feel like you're being challenged and struggling. Because helping shift your mindset in those moments is what's going to keep you progressing and it's going to help develop the skills that you're going to need to make this a sustainable program long-term. And right. you know, we keep going back to mindset and, and like that, that's my jive. That's my jam, you know? And, and, um, I used to help people lose weight and I used to do weight loss hypnosis and I still have a weight loss program uh, that's online that I do with people. And the missing component has always been having um, uh, knowing what to do at the gym and knowing what to eat. And people will say, well, I know what to do. I'm just not doing it. And after I started working with you, I realized there's so much misinformation out there that people don't really know that even if they made these two tweaks can really expedite the results. And so I want to talk about um, two myths and misconceptions that kind of hold people back. Uh, and these are questions that I've gotten asked. And one is, um, Dan, how long did it take you to start seeing results? And two, what were some of those results that you noticed that carried over into other parts of your life? And for me, I was working with you for 
two weeks and then you actually flew up to Massachusetts because you have family here. And I actually met you at a, like in person at a party and, and you're like, so dude, how are you doing? I noticed changes after those first two weeks in my energy level, in my ability to, to sleep. My sl I was getting much better sleep. I was feeling more energized. Chris, I hated getting up early in the morning. Like my first client would be at 10. My office is about 35 minutes away from my, op, uh, from my house. Dream job right there. Oh, dude. I would get up at eight o'clock in the morning, run to bring my dog out, jump in the shower, try and leave by nine, get to my office by like 9.40, uh, panic because I didn't have a cup of coffee, stop and get something from Dunkin' Donuts, get like a muffin or something like that from Dunkin' Donuts, eat when I could throughout the day, live on coffee. And, and that's what I was doing. And after I started working with you for two weeks, all of that stuff started changing. And I started noticing results in my energy level and in my sleep and in my mood and in my stress level. However, and like we had talked about this. So part of your plan is I send you photo. <laughs> I send you like, you're the only guy I've ever sent like nudes to. <laughs> and uh, let's be clear, you still have underwear on. I still have underwear on. I still have underwear on. They're I still want the audience to think that, you know, I need to know what kind of business I'm running here. <laughs> <laughs> if those photos ever get out, by the way, <laughs> yeah. you watch TMZ? <laughs> yeah, TMZ. Yeah. So celebrities wait to get a little bit more famous. Yeah. You just get a little bit more famous and then, you know, then the blackmail comes. Right, right. Celebrity hypnotist, celebrity hypnotist works with celebrity trainer and leak nudes, right? I could see the headline. How much are you willing to pay for me to not leak the photos? You know what? You just stop it right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but we talked about this. So the, I think it was like the second round of photos I sent you. Um, it looked like I gained weight and I said, dude, like I'm, I'm really disappointed. I've been really following the food plan. I, and I wouldn't call it a diet either. I, I never call it a diet. I, even when I was working with people to lose weight, I'd never call it a diet. It's mindful eating. It's, it's being very careful about what you're eating. It's, it's pr uh, prepping as well and taking that time. It's shopping differently. It changes your whole mindset and your whole reality about it. But here's the thing that I realized. You told me something really interesting. Muscle weighs the same as fat. And, um, and after that like first or second round of photos where I, I, I felt, I personally felt like it looked like I'd gained weight. Um, after that is usually where I would have dropped off and been like, I'm done. But I kept going for two more weeks and that's, where like I sent you the updated photos and you're like, holy crap. I'm like, holy crap. And that's where I started getting compliments and people saying like, just from doing videos online, people are saying, we can really see it in your face and you're, and you're, and, and then after that, like after six weeks, so in, in about, I started, I was 189 and now I'm down to 171, which it's not about the numbers, but for me, I feel it. I notice it. And now it's about those micro changes. Like you made a couple of changes to my, my eating plan recently. Um, but while we're on eating, how to go back real quick, I just want to go back and touch on how you talked about how I explained that muscle weighs the same as fat. And so the point that I was trying to make to you just so I want everybody who's watching to really understand what that means, because a pound of muscle and a pound of fat, they weigh the same. Two pounds of muscle, two pounds of fat, they weigh the same thing. The difference is that the, size, the volume that it occupies inside the body. So a pound of muscle is the size of a, a softball. A pound of fat is the size of a volleyball, just to give some frame of reference. They both weigh a pound, but what was happening is that you were building muscle faster than you were leaning down and, and burning fat. So you were showing more volume, right? inside your body because you're but but at the same time you weren't quite leaning down as fast in the early stages right right in the early stages because your body was still adapting and adjusting and going through so and everybody's body you know changes and adjusts and, and drops differently so 
that's why, but I, I, I do those photos every two weeks because it's important for you to get out of your head and to be able to see the truth. Pictures don't lie. Pictures tell us the truth. Yep. So it gives you an opportunity to really see what's happening with your body. But oftentimes I have clients, they don't, they don't, they look like they might have dropped 30 pounds, but really they've only dropped like 10 or 12 pounds because they've displaced that fat with muscle, which takes up less volume in the body, but it gives them that overall appearance that they're leaner, tighter, more athletic, more fit looking, you know? Um, so that just kind of helps explain that a little bit more. But, you know, as you're seeing now, we've gotten you down to, a, to the point where we're really happy where your body composition's at. And now we're in this building phase. And so now you're about to see your body change differently with modifications to nutrition, modifications to your training style. There's a lot of changes that we're making based on what those specific goals are. But uh, yeah, I mean, that was a great, it's a great way to kind of explain and under, help people understand, you, you know, know you know, they, they get in their heads just like how you did. You know, they, people who, the reason why I do it the way I do it is because if you're building muscle underneath body fat, you'll get into that, that mindset where you might be getting stronger and like you're working hard at the gym, but you're not seeing any change in your body because your diet's still crap or your meal, you're still eating like crap. And so you're not seeing any of that hard earned muscle and definition that that's sitting underneath those layers of fat. So I lean people down through my, pro my process first to get a true sense of what your real quality body composition of muscle is. And then from there, we build you up properly. And that's what helps save people a lot of you know, stress and feeling like they're beating their heads against the wall. Because when you lean your body down, even if you're trying to put on muscle, but you're, you're still carrying a lot of body fat, to lean you down, you now get to see what your real muscle composition is before you just try to get in the gym and just bulk up because you're not going to be happy with the results unless you're specifically trying to power, power lift or do something that requires you to just have that brute strength and you don't care about how you look. But the truth is most people care about more about how they look than just getting big and, 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 and muscly. You know? and, and I want to talk about the amount of work that it, that, um, it takes and kind of what other people have been telling me as well. Um, when I've been discussing it with other people, they're like, okay, so what do you do? I said, well, I go to the gym like six days a week and instantly I would say probably 65% of the people I talk to, I, I could never do that. I say, see, I told myself the same thing. Um, you can do that. You just choose not to. And, and it's a lifestyle change. And I explain it to them like this. I said, I didn't know how much I didn't know how crappy I was feeling before until I started to feel better. <laughs> and, and that, and that's, I mean, that's almost a hundred percent of the population. I mean, honestly, that's the almost a hundred percent of the population has no clue how bad they're feeling. They've got all sorts of symptoms and signs that their bodies are, are not happy. Right. Not that they're not happy, but, that their bodies are not happy, like gas, burping, digestive issues, chronic fatigue, I mean, pain in their bodies. There's all sorts of signs and symptoms that once you get yourself going the other direction, like you did, and you start to feel the changes happening, you realize I could do so much better for myself. I just have to make different choices. Yeah, that's exactly it. And and the same thing with like food. Oh, I don't have time to prepare my meals. And it, it, there's no finding time. And this is what I would try and convince my clients who want to lose weight of. There's no finding time. There's making time. And you have to make time for this. And I would have people say, oh, I have two kids and I have a job. And, and my husband works too. I don't, I don't have time. Yet I would work with somebody else who has four kids, has two jobs, and is a single mom, and they would make the time. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, I think it's all about making the time. And, and now in these times, getting extremely creative and looking at this as a time to reinvent yourself, as a time to work on you. Because how many times have, have you probably heard this? I know I've heard this. I don't have time to, to do X, Y, Z. Now, we're forced to stay at home. So my whole thing, again, to go back to that quote that I referenced in the beginning of this, my whole thing, when people say that to me, I just say, that's okay. It's just not important enough to you. And, and that's it. 
plain and simple. It's just not important enough to you. Burn. Right? <laughs> yeah. you know? I mean, it, it's okay. I mean, my, my way of coaching is I'm not going to, I'm not judging anybody. I'm not beating anybody up. I'm not pushing anybody to do anything. I just have evidence of a, a way that can help people get to the place that most people are coming to me asking for. Right. And so when you say to me, I don't have time for this, like you're saying, then I just repeat back to you. That's okay. It's just not important enough to you. It's okay. Or if they say to me, I don't have time. And I say, great, tell me what's going on. Let me help show you where we can make time for this. Or let's see where we can maybe fit this in so that you can still get the benefit and the advantage of this. And they go, oh, no, I still can't. It's just not important enough to you. Right. And that's okay. It doesn't have to be to everybody. But then you also have to own not complaining about the things you don't have that you're saying that you want. Yeah. So, you know, it, it kind of goes back into that place. But if it's important enough, you'll make time. And I challenge anybody who's listening to this video or watching this Zoom uh, webinar to think about something in their lives that they've ever wanted, like really, really bad, whether it was a job or whether it was a sport they were playing and they wanted to win the championship. If there was anything in their lives they've ever wanted really, really bad, I guarantee you they got it because they wanted it bad enough and they were willing to do whatever it took to get there or to get it. We all have experience with that. And so when it comes to health and fitness, most people just bail out so easily when in fact they all have that same, um, same skill set somewhere inside of them because we've all had that experience somewhere in our lives. And it's just taking, trying to connect those dots and applying that type of thinking towards the same approach if you want it bad enough, if it's important enough to you. It will most oftentimes only be important enough right. when you find out that there's a consequence or you're faced with a consequence of something failing with your health. Yep. Your knee yep. blows out. Now you got to have surgery because you realize that your legs haven't been strong and you haven't been you know, giving, working and training and exercising your body. Or you, know, you go to the doctor and he tells you that you've got some sort of you know, disease, maybe high blood pressure, diabetes. And now you're like, okay, I got to start eating healthier. It's like, then it becomes important enough. And again, it's trying to help get people into the mindset, not so that they're panicked and feared about all of those things happening, but those are just real things that are possible for any of us. We're all susceptible to that. And trying to get into that mindset beforehand so that you just take some actions, it actually makes preparing food, eating healthier, going to the gym, it makes it feel more purposeful. You're not just going just to go. Right. You know? um, so yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I think mindset is really, it's, it's key to this whole process. And it's, it's why it's such a big part of my program. You know, the training is this much, you know, the nutrition is this much. The mindset is like this. It's, it's everything. It's huge. And like I said, having that support system is really helpful. Uh, and, and also knowing what to eat, because there are times where I go to a restaurant and I'll shoot you a quick message. I'll be like, Hey, Chris, here's the menu. And you'll <laughs> pull it up on your phone. And you're like, okay, you're safe. This, this, and this. Um, and I want to the art of adjustment. Yeah. Adjusting. And, and I want to talk about food um, because, and uh, we have about 15 minutes left. So I want to talk about the importance of, uh, of meal plan, the importance of what you're putting into your body, because now I see a trend every time. So I go to the grocery store and there's like no meat or anything like that. And it seems like people's second natural inclination is to now raid the junk food aisles, potato chips, Doritos. I call it the Edo family, uh, Doritos, Tostitos, Fritos. <laughs> and, and what is in abundance in at least in the grocery stores around me fruits vegetables natural foods healthy food. yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> there's a shortage of toilet paper but there's not a shortage <laughs> shortage of lettuce plenty of apples plenty, right? plenty of apples and lettuce tons of arugula <laughs> right <laughs> like uh, have you ever tried to wipe your ass with an arugula leaf it's difficult <laughs> no, it's not right. actually you know what <laughs> better than kale kale's too rough yeah, yeah. Uh, so um so i want to talk a little bit about like the mindset shift of mm -hmm. of eating um well that actually plays into um plays into the one of the questions that was asked i was going to reference and just i know we're getting short on time 
but I think I can't remember who asked it. Was it Erica? Erica. Yeah. Erica. Erica asked, what's what was one common? I think you have the question in front of you, but what was one common um, common sense um, trick or hack that I would recommend to my clients? It was that I, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of paraphrasing what's the, here. What's the one common sense change you wish every client would make from Erica right. Gifford? Right. And so nutrition is, is, is that, and I'll, I'll dive in a little bit more specifically just to address your, your question. Um, the common sense thing is what we put in our bodies affects how we look, how we feel and how we function. Bottom line, what we put in our bodies is our fuel for our vehicle. It's common sense. So I wish that more people would take into consideration and take it more seriously that if you're not feeling the way you want to feel, if you're not looking the way you want to feel, if you're not functioning the way you want to function, reevaluate and audit what you're putting into your body. Not because somebody's written a meal plan for you or you read somewhere that keto or paleo or the Miami Vice diet or whatever, you know, whatever these diets are. But because there's science and facts out there all over the internet, you've got access, Google it, that when you eat better, cleaner, healthier, when you make better choices, your body is going to look and feel and function better. Bottom line, it's common sense. When you put junk food in, your body is going to operate sludgy, it's going to look messy, and you're not going to be able to function very well. So... Um, to get back to your point, I think that there's just some people that don't care. There's different categories. And then there's people who care but don't know. And then there's people who really care and know and have some really good balance with it. And then there's people who are on the complete other end of the spectrum and are just <laughs> never touch yeah. junk food, alcohol. They don't touch anything. So, you know, respect to all of those categories. There's no, again, there's no judgment. It just always comes back to what do you want? You know, how are you feeling? What are you talking about saying, uh, you know, how you feel and what you want? You know, if you're complaining about you're tired all the time, you have no energy all the time, take a look at that. Step back, do an audit. Are there, you not eating enough? Are you eating too much junk food? Are you not eating enough healthy, healthy fruits, vegetables, and clean proteins and carb sources? You know, I mean, it's, these are, these are really important questions for people to you know this is a level up group to level up their self-awareness and their honesty there was uh <laughs> there's a dad joke going through my mind when you said like kind of like we become what we eat i said that's why a year ago i was acting like such a cheese ball <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing though like um when i met you in person um we were at a pizza party and you're like, oh, Dan, <laughs> oh, oh, contraire, because <laughs> I've prepared something special for you. And I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> and, and you're like, chicken breast. And I'm like, you douche. <laughs> but, ruin the party. Yeah. <laughs> but you said, um, he's like, if you want to have a piece of pizza, have a piece of pizza. And there were two categories of pizza. There's like the traditional um uh, like pizzeria pizza. And then there was this like gourmet pizza. And you're like, which one are you going to eat? You're like, if you want to have a piece of pizza, have a piece of pizza. And I'm like, shit, this is a test. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, which one do I go for? I'm like, you know what? If I'm going to eat pizza, it's going to be good pizza. So I went with the gourmet pizza. You're like, good choice. And there's protein on it. Wonderful. Um, but here's the thing though. I like the first, um, I would say the first like two months, I was really, really focused on, Dan, you can't make any mistakes with this. You have to eat just what he, and then I realized um, that, like I would go out and other people would say, are you really gonna live like this the rest of your life? Because it seems like you're depriving yourself of a lot. And then it clicked in my head. Um, it, it's number one, it's not deprivation. And something that I was really focusing on was how I would feel if I did eat crap and if I ate it consistently. Um, the other thing I would focus on is uh, like if I want a piece of pizza, I would have a piece of pizza, but it'd have to be a really good piece of pizza. And it's not something that 
I'm going to do every day or, or I'm not going to have four pieces of pizza. If I want a piece of pizza. After, it's not frozen as a doorknob. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> not delivery either. But here's the thing though, Chris, you said to me, you've gone 32 years of your life eating pizza, mac and cheese, and whatever you want. And he said, so three months out of your life on focusing on developing a new groove isn't really that much. Three months out of your life isn't that much out of the 32 years that you've been on this, on this earth. So that meant a lot. That was a huge mindset shift for me is this is three months because you said, I do want you to be more, a little bit more disciplined until you start seeing results before you start to really stray from stuff. And that's where... Um, like I said, my friends will go out, they'll order pizza, pasta, breadsticks. Like that's totally fine. I don't judge them. I do a little bit. Um, but, but I choose not, I choose not to eat that or I'll have like a little piece of bread or something like, like that much of a bite of a breadstick or something like that instead of having four. Right. Um, and it's not something where I'm going to lose my shit every single day. Right. I, and then you compensate for it. So the next, like, well, you know. another way I like to frame that is what you're doing is giving yourself an opportunity to build evidence. Right. As right. You need evidence to see that taking this approach has merit, that it actually works. And if in those three months, you're still dosing yourself with all the things you've been eating over the last 32 years. How are you at the end of those 90 days going to have any real true basis of comparison right. of evidence to go back and say, you know what, I'm going to make the change. You're going to go, this thing doesn't really work. And you're not going to be honest with yourself. And say, well, I didn't really do it the right way. I didn't. You're going to just say this thing doesn't work, right? Don't want to take accountability. Don't want to own it, you know? And so it's all about being, being mindful or being strict or disciplined is really I like to frame it up as giving myself an opportunity to gain some evidence. You know, it's softer, it's less, um, it's less, it's less parenting. You know, I always talk about like the difference between self-discipline and self-love, you yep, know, yep, yep, when we were children, yep. we were disciplined by our parents. And when our parents would ever tell us to do something, or when people, even as adults, somebody tells you to do something, the natural reaction is to be like, fuck off. I'm not doing that. Right. Whatever I want. Right. We do that to ourselves. So when people say, like, I'm not drinking for 30 days, you know, it's like, it gets like a week, they're like, I'm doing it, you know, week two, they're like, and then all of a sudden they start to crack and they break because it's like they put this hard restriction, this discipline of parenting themselves versus saying, coming from a place of self-love saying, no, listen, like I care enough about myself. I'm trying to make these choices that are better for me, better for my body. So it's making a good choice in my honor to say no to that right now because I'm trying to gain some evidence to see if there's a better way, right? And that changes your whole approach. The runway up to that and when you're faced with all of those different uh, challenges or urges, it's, it feels so much different. It feels so much easier when you take that approach versus being like, oh, I said I couldn't have that. Uh, I don't, oh God, I want that so bad, but I said I wouldn't do it. It's like, it just never, that, that, that method usually fails nine times out of 10 for people. And I tell a lot of my clients, focus on, and this is what we call future pacing and hypnosis, focus on how you're going to feel when you choose to make this decision versus that decision. And mm-hmm. focus on the feelings that you're going to get. Are you going to look back and in hindsight and say, oh, dude, I feel really guilty that I did that and I, I, and, and I shouldn't have done that. And future pace also and think of how you'll feel when you'll say no or (laughs) there's a strategy i told you about this chris i was in the airport at like six in the morning and i walked by dunkin donuts (laughs) and i and i like i loved donuts and there was this like this chocolate covered heart shaped donut that was cream filled like oh I just heard this little voice in my head that goes, not today, Satan. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa. And, and like using these little pattern interrupts of, okay, if I ate that donut, I'd probably really feel like crap. And I would have felt like crap. Mm-hmm. Um, so using these little like mind hacks to, to interrupt those negative patterns, future pace it out, how you're going to. Sure. 
like you said, approach it from self, uh, an area of self love instead yeah. of deprivation. And the other, you know, to, to kind of follow, to piggyback on that thought, which was, I had a, another, um, another answer to that question from Erica is, is thinking about the consequences or the higher stakes further down the line, not just immediate, right? Like if you were to eat that donut, it's not going to make me feel good right now, probably, or I might enjoy it, but then later on, I'm, you know, within the next few hours, I'm probably going to feel it. Right. right. But trying to create higher stakes, higher purpose with a more proactive approach about thinking about what, where do you want to be in your thirties, in your forties, in your fifties, in your sixties, right? What are some things that you still want to be able to accomplish when you're 50 or 60 years old that by what the choices and decisions that you're making right now may hinder or affect that, you know, people who aren't taking care of their health and wellness right now and aren't trying to keep their body strong and fit and mobile, right. Aren't working on mobility and stretching and aren't thinking about, Hey, when I'm 50 and I want to still be able to carry my kids and get on the ground and play with my grandchildren, or I want to still be able to travel and go hike Machu Picchu. Or it's like, if you're not thinking about down the line, then you could be doing things in the short term that are, that are creating consequences that you don't even know are coming down the line. And so I think that's also, it's just helpful to take those into consideration uh, with, with, their, with your mindset and how you're thinking about decisions you're gonna make immediately and what are the consequences. And also, not even necessarily the consequences, but what would be some of your goals much later on in life and how you doing something right now and taking action right now will help you be able to accomplish that by the time you get there. You know, regret is a, is a, is a funny thing, man. And, you know, it's impossible to completely avoid it, but you know, we try to shrink that regret pile down as small as possible so that, you know, when we're, we're wherever we are at that time, when it comes for us that we're sitting there going, you know what? I did pretty good. I did pretty good. You know, I checked off a lot of boxes. I'm happy with that. There's, there's been a lot of people that I've, um, uh, that I used to see in my practice and, and their, their, uh, circumstances was, you know, I can't get on the ground and play with my grandkids. Uh, I can't pick my leg up to tie my shoe. Um, uh, and all these things are pe things that sometimes people take for granted. And, and when you, and, and again, this is, this is something that's not just happened to me. I, I see it happening to a lot of people when they focus on themselves, I focus on my physical fitness and literally every, just about every area of my life got better. And because I could show up, I could be there. I could be confident. I could be happier. Um, and it's not that I was unhappy. I just didn't realize that I could feel better because I, you know, you don't know any better. And it's funny because this is stuff I used to help people with all the time it just when when you have a little bit more hand holding you have a different perspective and so can you talk a little bit about the hand holding that you do with people the program that you offer people uh, yeah. because i get asked all the time on social media like what's the program that you're doing how are you doing all this and and who's helping you with this and this is the guy who's helping me with it so can you explain a little bit about your program and, and yeah i mean Contrary to, you know, what I think most people in the industry, most trainers and coaches, you know, I think out there, not a knock on their practices, but what I'm trying to do differently is to create independence, not dependence. And so there's three things that I, that I try to accomplish with every client that I work with. There's three main pillars. It's awareness, attitude and accountability. So awareness. Are you, are you open-minded to new perspectives? Attitude. Are you, are you willing and, and focused on what you're trying to accomplish? And accountability. Are you willing to hold yourself accountable? And so in that, inside of those three pillars, when you're, when you're meal prepping, when you're getting yourself up and sticking to new routines and going to the gym early in the morning, when you're following through with your workouts, when you're checking the boxes off on the app with your workouts, when you're coming home and, and taking an Epsom salt bath at night for rest and recovery, when you're being mindful about things, steps that you're taking to help improve your sleep at night, 
all of these disciplines that you're working on in this program is really the same disciplines and skill sets that you apply to every single piece of your life, your business, your relationships, your friendships, your personal goals and endeavors. It's all the same principles and skill sets. So increasing awareness, increasing attitude, and increasing accountability is inflated because you're applying it really diligently to this program. We're putting it all in the program, but really it's the training ground for your life. And so it overlaps into every category. And that's what I think is really such a great aha moment for almost every single client that I work with is that they feel the exact same way you do is that they see everything start to level up. You know, a rising tide raises all ships, right? I love that quote because because you're, you're seeing your business improve, increase because you're in the office earlier. You have a whole new area of content to, to relate to and talk to with clients, not just from books that you've read, but from, pract from practitioners. You're out there doing it yourself. You're a living, breathing example of it in so many other areas. You know, you're, you're more accountable. You're more attentive. You're more, you're, there's just so much more, uh, so much more depth to every level of your life based on the training ground that you've been working on, which has been the program that you don't realize is, is leveling everything up for you. I didn't realize the amount or, or the effect that this would have on every area of my life or just about every area of my life. And like I said, Chris, this was, has been like a life transformation program, not, not just a, you go to the gym, you eat right and you work out. Um, I, uh, I, I really, really do mean this where I consider you a friend and also like a bro. <laughs> we have bro time talk. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And, you know, it's, it, there are conversations we need to have and we get deep. Like I was on, I was on FaceTime last week with you bawling my eyes out <laughs> and you're like, dude, it's okay. You know, this, Get it out, baby. And so these are the things that need to happen. And it's a total alignment of things where you make changes here. You don't even realize that you're also making changes over here and, and your relationship, your job or your career um, with different patterns and habits that you have that you just stop, uh, that you interrupt and you get into a whole new pattern, a whole new way of thinking. And, and it's been amazing and totally transformational. Well, I think it's important to kind of sum all that up is that, um, in particular, when people come into my program, but in general, when people come into any fitness program, most people come in thinking they want fitness, but really what people are looking for is wellness. Yep. Yep. And those are two totally different things. 100%. Because you can, you can be really, really fit and look like a 10, but feel like a two. And if you look like a 10 and feel like a two, I can tell you right now, I know plenty of people and I've seen we see all see examples of it all over the world that it doesn't matter that you look like a 10. And so wellness encapsulates fitness. It's a part of it. But what people are really looking for is wellness. And fitness is a piece of that. Fitness is the easiest thing for us to go to to feel well because our heart rates go up. We get sweaty. We get a pump, right? You feel that change immediately. But Wellness requires a little bit more work, a little bit more attention, and a little bit more consistency, right? And so that's why it's so easily dismissed. But yeah. what I do is to take what's really, really wide and narrow it down into a small little package to make it palatable and easy and digestible so that people can just go down the line and follow the steps day by day. And if you don't know, I do. It's laid out in front of you. There's no guesswork. All you have to do is just trust the process and implement. And it doesn't take long for results to show up in the wellness category. The fitness category falls very quickly right behind it, right? But fitness is not the key. Wellness is what people are looking for. And it's made up of what I call my one verse 23 philosophy. I think I've talked to you about this before. The one hour a day you spend in the gym is far less impactful than what you do the other 23 hours of your day that include rest and recovery, nutrition, supplementation, uh, energy management, time management, stress management, 
you know, you go down the line, all of these things make up that totality. And I think, you know, when you, when you kind of summarize it like that, people just have a different feeling about fitness in general. It's just not, it's not as intimidating. It's more interesting, you know? And you have a book about this. Uh, you have a, a, your program as well. Uh, how do people watching reach out and contact you? And what, what's kind of the first step? Yeah, people, I mean, I, I'm on all the platforms, all the social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, under Chris DeVecchio. Um, IMDb. <laughs> IMDb. Um, yep. Uh, so people can reach out. I get DMs all the time. If you shoot me, a, shoot me a, a message on Instagram or Facebook, or if you go to the website, www.chrisdevecchio.com. I don't know if you put notes in on the- Yeah, uh, yeah I'm going to put the notes meetings. in it. Um, but you can click on the link. Uh, Dan, feel free. You can share my information with people. If anybody wants to connect with me, you can connect us on a group text. Um, you know, if anybody, I'm, I'm always open to offering free video consultations. If people have questions or are interested in the program, they can always reach out um, to talk about that. And so I can understand more of who they are, what their needs are and, and see if there's a fit. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think we, we both have done a really great job here kind of outlining a lot of detail and information that, you know, regardless of uh, what people are going to do moving forward under these new circumstances, that if they just start to apply some of the things that we discussed today, and if they don't know, they can always reach out to me or you, or, I mean, again, we have Google that you can just jump on and, and look up some of this information. And, and that's a great step for people to take. It shows, it's showing themselves that they care enough to do some research, to find some information about how they can make some changes. Absolutely. Uh, but, Anybody can reach out anytime. I'm always open, always happy to have conversations to help, help people as much as I can. Well, Chris, it was a pleasure having you on. And uh, thank you so much for, for being so open with my audience. And, and you know, feel free to share this around as much as possible as well. Um, my name is Dan Kandel, the Anxiety Relief Guy. And as I always end all my videos, be well, do good, and be true to who you are. See you on the flip side.